Hi guys, I'm going to do a video showing you guys how the watercolor brush markers work on different types of paper because I know with this year having to buy so many different sketchbooks um, because of um, what's going on with having to buy your own supplies and everyone has a slightly different sketchbook, I want to show what it looks like on different types of paper so that you get an understanding of what it might look like for you. Um, so this sketchbook is by Specialist Crafts and it is 150 GSM. Remember that we told you to get at least 120, all right? So it's 150 GSM. Is I'm gonna show you what the colors look like. I'm gonna show the what it col colors look like just by applying them to the paper, but then also adding some water to them as well to show you kind of the different effects. Remember that you won't have to add water to yours, but you can, as part of extension work, as homework, you can kind of extend your, your project and go into a little bit more detail and a little bit more depth. And for those of you who are taking the older years, you might be more likely to do that. So I just wanna show you the difference. So we're gonna start with this piece of, this type of drawing paper, okay? And um, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a random color. I'm gonna have no order to this, because now that I've tossed them all into a bag, they're all disorganized and they're not color coded anymore. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush pen, okay, remember I want to use the brush side, not the fine tip side, and I'm going to just draw a little bit of the color down. Okay, now while it is still wet, I'm going to grab one of my refillable brush pens, okay, these are filled with water, and I'm going to squeeze a little bit of water onto the bristles and use that to extend the ink out. Okay, and you can see that I get a nice range of color that way. I'm going back and forth, I'm able to break up the line. So that section there, right there, is solid ink um, with no water on it. And then as I add water on it, it fades out. So I'm gonna do that a couple more times so you can see the variety. Make sure I don't repeat my colors. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to add a section of ink, and then while it is still wet, take my brush pen and move it along. Okay, this allows me to shift the ink around and to paint with it. I will also show you how to paint sort of just by using the brush pens themselves, but it's nice to see what can happen when you add water for other effects. Try this again, keeping the same family of colors. And okay, let's speed this up. Okay, so for this one, this sketchbook, it is a Moleskine sketchbook, and they're about 165 GSM. They're pretty good quality paper. Um, I don't know if any of your parents invested in getting something fancy like this, but if they did, I want you to see what it looks like on this paper. It's also, you'll notice this paper isn't the bright white paper that most of your sketchbooks are. This one's more cream colored, and I know some of you have sort of creamy colored pages, so it's good to see what it looks like. Um, this paper is fairly smooth, there isn't that much texture to it. Um, so we're gonna see what that looks like. Also, it's good to know that uh, because I'll be using the ink and the water on this, the pages kind of curve a little bit because of the binding of this book. The last sketchbook was spiral bound. This one is uh, a standard book binding and um, because of that, obviously, I'm gonna have to deal with the fact that the water's gonna move. Okay, so we're gonna start with of colors so you can see. Um, for these demos I have been alternating between using the Sakura Koi brushes because I've got a couple of those as well as the Stead Letter 
duo watercolor brushes. So um, just so you know, you're kind of getting the effects of two different ones. Okay, so let's put that one down. Okay, now you can see that this paper has absorbed the ink a lot faster. Um, so you've got a much harder line, and I don't want to overwork it. You can see there's a bit of pilling here. Um, so let's look at that color on a different paper so you can see the difference. So this one and this one are the same color, and yet they come out very different. This one's a lot warmer on this paper because of the cream tones of the paper, whereas it's a lot colder here because this is a, a bright white paper. Okay, so this is why these things are important, important to keep track of. Okay, let's keep it going and we'll do a couple more. And I'm sticking to the blues. I've sort of put my markers in a rainbow orientation this time, so it might be a little bit easier to see the variations. Remember, I want you to see what they look like. It's just straight marker, but also if you add water, because these are watercolor brushes, and you do have the option to add water to them. So that dark color definitely has got more of a solid line, whereas the other ones tend to have a little bit more of a variance in them. So something to keep in mind as you do your work. All right, first one right on the spine, so let's see what happens there. And here's that icy blue color that barely shows up, but you'll definitely use it to kind of do little highlights here and there on things. So it might not seem overly necessary, but it is super helpful. Okay, so there you can see a range of blues. All right, so let's take a look at the blues on the other page. I know they're not as well organized on this one. I do apologize about that, but you can see that the blues show up a little bit more differently on the two types of paper. So just take a good look at how that, get that variety. These ones are the same color, but it's a lot stronger, a lot darker on this paper. Um, and I'd say more blue, whereas you kind of get a bit more green in this, because if you look here, that blue stays pretty strong right there. Okay, so let's speed through the rest of the colors so you can see what those look like. Okay, so this is it all done. So you can see the difference between the two different papers. Now the color quality is a little bit different. How the ink gets absorbed is different. Okay, if you take a look at that one versus that one. Okay, one of the reasons it's different is due to the strength of the paper, it shifts differently. So for example, this one, the paper has kind of warped a little bit. It's got a bit of a, a bump in it because of the moisture. Um, whereas if you look at this paper, which is 150 GSM, just a little bit lighter than this one, there's a little bit more bubbling in it. That being said, it still does hold up to the watercolor very well. So I'm going to flip it over. You can see that the color doesn't come through. You get a little bit of what's referred to as ghosting, where a little bit of the color comes, sorry, a little bit of the color is kind of sh a shadow through it, but it doesn't actually bleed through it. You can only really see the other color because the light is shining underneath the paper. Okay? Um, over here, and there's a drawing on the other page that my son had done, and you can see that you can see the colors, okay, underneath. He's two, by the way, that's why it's scribbles, okay? Um, there's colors underneath, but it doesn't actually bleed right through. All the place it bled was where the spine was, which makes sense because that's where the strings are that hold papers together. All right, so the last one that we're gonna do is using actual watercolor paper. Sorry for that close up. Um, so, I made a small little one here. This paper is just small little cards that I use sometimes. Okay, so this is actual watercolor paper, um, which it would be the best option to use. 
Um, however, this is cold press, which means it's got a bit of a texture. Probably would have been better if I had the hot press stuff, which is smooth. Okay, there's 300 GSM, which is more than double what I asked you guys to get. Okay, so this is a really good quality paper, so it's gonna show up differently. All right, those of you in the older years, the DP, the higher MYP, you might choose to get a good quality watercolor paper to use these in your artwork. All right, so why don't you take a look at what that looks like. All right, in this demo, I'm gonna be showing how to use the stead letter brush pens and the koi brush pens on watercolor paper. And I'm also gonna incorporate some Pentel brush pens, uh, water refillable pens, so you can show, you can see what happens when you actually incorporate water into these watercolor pens. So this is a piece of watercolor paper, just basic student grade paper that we have here in the school, nothing fancy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a wet on wet technique, which means I'm gonna apply my watercolor brush color, and then I'm gonna immediately, while it's still theoretically wet, I'm going to grab one of these Pentel brush pens and I'm gonna add some water to it so you can see what happens to the color. So here we go. then two layers of the color. Let me grab my brush pen. Now the brush pen works by just squeezing water through the barrel into the bristles. And I'm gonna use that to shift the color around. Now as always with watercolor, you don't wanna overwork the paper. If you overwork the paper, you will find it'll start to pill Pill is those little dots that happen on fabric and they kind of bunch up. So just trying to be aware of that because obviously this is some student quality paper so it's not necessarily the strongest. But you can see it's coming along pretty well. Alright, so that was it with the using the stead letter brush pens. Okay, those are these ones. They're the ones that come in this pack. All right, now I'm gonna to switch to trying it with the koi. Now, I don't wanna put the wet too close to the wet, so I'm gonna skip a box, and I'll come back to this intervening box later. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna apply the color on all four sides. Same that I did with the stud letter, I'm gonna do two layers, just because this is my first time trying this, and I wanna see what happens. And now I'm gonna use the Pentel brush pen I'm gonna just drip the water through it by giving just a slight squeeze, and that's gonna allow me to pick up the color and get a transition out. Now you can see that it picks up some of the color, and you can definitely get a nice sort of faded, pastel-y color, but it's not quite getting the depth I wanna get. So the next thing I'm gonna test is I'm gonna try putting the water straight on the page and then drawing over top of it with one of the two markers. Okay, so here I'm gonna go, let's try with that stud letter again in the same color. So we're gonna go right into that green. And when I do that, yes, I'm still able to draw on the paper, on the edges, but the water, there we go, begins to pick up the color. You can see as I shift the paper around, the color really bleeds out. I'm gonna do that one last time, but this time with 
the Koi brush pen. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work the water onto the paper. And then I'm going to put the Koi straight on top of the water and let that color bleed out into the ink. Oh wow, you get some quite a bit of color that way. Let's try just touching the water. Okay, so where the water's deepest, I'm getting a little bit more color, which makes sense. I'm gonna shift it around, let it kind of fill the box. You really lose the harsh lines doing it this way, which is nice to see. Let me go back to this one with the stud letter one. Just touch on the areas that are still quite wet. Uh, the stud letter brush pens, the nib is a lot harder than the Sakura Koi uh, brush pens. So you get a very different effect and um, of what happens because you can't um, trust in more of a, the feeling of a brush. This one, because it's harder, feels closer to a marker and so doesn't move as subtly as the Koi Sakura brush pens. Okay, so you can see what happens there. So I'm going to fill in the rest of these boxes with the other colors so we can see kind of the variation of color that we get. And I'm also going to do one that is um, dry on wet. So dry on wet means what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, ooh, I've got too much water after touching that to the edge. Let's clean that brush off a little bit, try to get that water free. There we go. And you can really tell that this is student quality paper because it's picking up um, the paper quite quickly. I'm just going to do this piece dry. I'm going to do the same thing. Oopsies, move my camera. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the blue over here. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to go teach the year nines. And when I come back, and therefore this is completely dry without a doubt, because it would have been, you know, an hour. Um, I'm going to come and apply water to it and see how well it picks up the color. Okay, so these have been drying for about an hour now and you can see that the line is less crisp on the stud letter ones. You get more of an even effect across with the color. Whereas if you take a look at this one, the Koi marker, um, the color is a lot deeper and it doesn't bleed out as much, although you do get these little tendril effects. Now these ones were the ones that were wet and wet, so I applied water first and then I applied the, the brush pen afterwards and you can see that it's a nice even tone. And over here with the Koi, you've got a bit of a crackle effect going on. So you definitely get a smoother effect with the stud letters. So now we're going to try and see what happens by putting um, a wet brush on top of the dry ink to see if we can shift the ink now that it's had time to dry a little water out of my page and now I'm going to use that to try and pick up some of the ink. It's really important to check this because obviously different brands work different ways. Sometimes you're able to pick up the color, sometimes you're not. And that lets you know how much you can get away with um, in changes after the fact. So it's definitely picking up a little bit of the ink. Uh, not very much, but it is starting to get just a little bit picked up um, right along here. Uh, now we're going to try that with the Koi brush pen. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply a little bit of water to the page using the refillable pen. And then I'm just going to shift it around and see if I can pick up any of that blue ink and get it to move around the page. Okay, so it's starting to come out a little bit. Actually, I would say probably a little bit more so that it is with the stud letter. However, um, I want to see if I can get rid of that hard line because if you remember, this was it when you did um, the water on top of the wet pen and you still had that hard line. And I'm trying to see if I can get rid of that hard line and get a nice smooth effect. Doesn't seem to break up too easy. At this point, I'm starting to overwork the page a little bit and I'm concerned about pilling. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there.